Don't get me wrong. I love bow hunting. But there's a gratifying feeling when you pick up the shotgun and you know if that big buck is within 200 yards with the Savage Model 220 slug gun, you've got it. It's obviously not as simple as that, but it does level the playing field a bit. Just like any other hunt, when you get there, you gotta shoot the shotgun, check it, make sure it's on. Especially if you're gonna take some of those longer shots that the Model 220 is capable of, you just gotta shoot at the range, spend the time, and know the holds. They're definitely not as flat shooting as a rifle, so you really need to know what that setup is and how to hold if you're gonna take those longer shots. Yeah. It is a little bit higher than uh, I thought, about three inches, which is bad, but I may make a small adjustment real quick just to knock it down just a touch. Pretty good. This is definitely a spot I'm considering hunting. Yeah, I mean, we may hunt it a lot this week with, I mean, it's just the corn plots they just destroyed. I came in and I uh, just hand seeded in turnips and radishes and they did pretty good in those underneath the corn actually. They're not big, but they're in there. But this pinch point and this draw is just so good. It stands right there. I mean, with a gun, nothing can get through this pinch point. We've. I'm highly considerate. We'll see what's on this card, but if there's something good here, this might be a spot that we need to spend a little time this week. It's definitely a heck of a pinch point. When you're outfitting, preparation is everything. Murphy's Law definitely applies, so you really need to be prepared for anything. We're running our hunts in Iowa on about 4,000 acres. We've got dozens and dozens of stand locations. We've got cameras all over these farms. During the season, we typically keep a few spare blinds and stands laying around because we're always hanging something different or needing another setup to hunt a particular buck because of a wind direction or the wind changes. You just never know. At the end of the day, we're doing our best to make sure all of our clients are going to have the best chance possible to put their tag on a mature whitetail buck. It's a beautiful morning in Iowa. We just had about, I don't know, nine or ten deer come through. We had a couple small bucks chasing some does here behind us. So there seems to be some pretty good activity this morning. We're just hoping a good one comes out here pretty soon. Oh, the, there's a five over here with a couple does. They're gonna work through the they're gonna work through the corn here. Hold on. Not a shooter. Wow, that was funny. I just looked up and there he was. But he needs another year to grow up. He'll be a stud in a couple years. Got a spot we've been watching bucks on a covert camera that I wanted to hunt for the last two months. Opening day of shotgun season, the wind's wrong. So we've changed our plan where we were glassing on this cornfield the other night. We saw a really big buck here and we know there's three good bucks in this block of timber. There's still good corn left in this field. So we popped a blind up that'll work with this wind. We have a um, old shooting house, but the wind's wrong for it. So we popped a blind up out here. We're gonna sneak out here to the blind set up hunt here tonight if we don't kill one here we might try the spot if the wind will let us tomorrow that we're wanting to hunt we're trying not to go in there and mess that up because there's there's just a couple of just monsters in there uh there's some good deer here too so you gotta hunt where the wind lets you hunt and that's what we're doing tonight i always tell my guys if it's not right don't hunt the spot it's not worth forcing a hunt to spook a deer off of your property that you've been trying to hunt all season. I'm also a big believer that you have to be in the field in order to kill one. So we always try to have a backup plan in play. 
You might have another food plot, another corn patch, another standing bean patch, or multiple stands on one of these locations so that we can always hunt them no matter what the wind's doing. The big thing is being able to get into these stand locations without the deer knowing you're there, and then while you're there, the wind still being right. This takes some preparation and hard work to get all this figured out, knowing that when these opportunities present themselves, you might be able to close the deal. This block of timber holds some deer. There's the drop tine deer that Jamie saw bow hunting this year. There's the banana tin. There's that one that's just that real clean tin point, just nice looking deer. There's one that's right across the road that we've been seeing on the beans that could show up. He could be in here just as easy. He's just a big old nice brow tine tin. And then there's the one we saw the other night glass in front of the road that I think he had a split G2. I don't know what deer that is, but he was big too. At the end of the day, when it comes to having good food plots, there's not a lot of our stand locations that are a bad spot. So if you've got the food and it's the right time of year, the deer are gonna be there. decent buck. I can't see his body is over that little rise. He's got a split G2, like a split brow or something, or a kicker or something going on. in this field we jumped some and when we came back we waited till almost dark and we came by real slow and glassed this field over and it was like twice as many out so i'm hoping they come back and here comes some deer they're they're trying to come back out back here in the corner two does yearling does are coming right out of the woods in the corner right there where a bunch of those deer came out earlier. There's a buck coming, I can't tell what it is yet. It's a drop time buck. It's the drop time. It's the drop time. Are you good? Because he's right there at 100 yards. Toast dropped in his tracks. Ooh. Jamie, there's your buck. I texted Jamie earlier and said we couldn't hunt the deer I wanted to hunt, so we we're gonna come over here and try the drop time. Yeah, well, uh, he just walked out. <laughs> I shot him at 100 yards. Mostly hit him just a touch high in the shoulder because it dropped in like a sack of potatoes. Man, oh man, look at that buck. Nothing wrong with that, boys and girls. Look at that thing that hangs off of his chin. Look at that, big old infection. Nice mass, good brow tines. But the drop time, I mean, that makes that deer. That's so cool. Split ear, I mean, this dude's just a, I don't know what happened to this deer. He's having a bad day. There are higher scoring deer here, zone five, Iowa, but there's not many that are that cool with the drop time. That makes him pretty unique. And I mean, this deer's just a battle scarred up dude. Well, shotgun season in Iowa has kicked off with a bang. Well, 
absolutely another great season here in Iowa. Land of the Giants for sure. Jamie saw some big deer and was able to put his hands on a nice 10-point buck with his bow. Then at the end of the season, I was able to get set up on that drop time buck he had seen on the first day of his hunt and shoot my second drop time deer of the year. If you think you might want to hunt Iowa, or if you're going to be drawing a tag soon in Iowa, please give us a call. We'd love to have you here at SOE Hunts. We've got a special place here in Iowa, and we'd love to have you.